Thank you, Dante. Uh, my apologies for uh, us being a little bit out of order with the agenda, but we'll get back. Um, our next agenda item is item number six, uh, approving the R job annual report to the Board of Supervisors. And that is attachment number four. Chris, I think this is on you. Okay. Um, right. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know if you wanted to give any any introductory information about the fact that this is sort of an abbreviated version of what is going to be much more robust by the time it gets to them. But uh, in order to approve, basically wanted to have the the substance of it here for people to take a look at um, and let me know if if I'm missing anything. Um, so starting on page. 12 is uh, the the uh, the report that I'm referring to, uh, at least in its current form now. And um, the activities, I think you guys, most of you were, were here for. So we talked about the fact that um, we were finally able to establish the, all three subcommittees uh, to do this work, that the RJOB took public comments um, that was largely about, I think, at our first sort of relaunch meeting back in, I think, May or June, uh, about COVID uh, releases, right? Uh, people being concerned about uh, folks being in jail uh, during COVID who uh, might have been elderly or might have been, um, you know, might have had pre existing uh, uh, health conditions. Uh, that made them more susceptible to COVID or who had six months or less left on uh, their sentence and asking for, you know, those folks to be released or for, uh, you know, efforts to be uh, coordinated in terms of ensuring their safety. Obviously, this, this body, um, in terms of the quarterly larger group, um, took the action of, uh, you know, drafting some formal language to send uh, to the Board of Supervisors in support of uh, those asks, which were made by the public um, during that meeting. Um, and then a lot of the, the remaining activities, uh, particularly current activities, come from uh, the subcommittees, right? So a lot of it is what you already heard, right? With CEF, it's, um, it's working toward uh, developing the, the um, community capacity fund and what that should look like, as well as a youth listening session and that youth listening session okay. supporting, okay. Uh, oh. Oh, <laughs> supporting, uh, supporting the development of a, a youth advisory group, which you, you all have already heard of, as well as, uh, you know, the subcommittee having had, right, uh, a community listening session earlier this year, which was largely attended by adults, um, which was, uh, wherein people weighed in about uh, the, the closing of the ranch at the time, the boys ranch. Um, so that's what the activities look like there. Diversion subcommittee, we just talked about uh, what those activities have been. Uh, I, the data subcommittee, um, you know, you, you sort of heard what those are. So I'll just go into uh, accomplishments here because I think this is, this is uh, you know, some really important stuff that it can get easy to lose. I know it feels like sometimes we, you know, we're moving slower. This this process is always slower than we want it to be. And I know you guys have heard me say that a lot. Uh, like every time we've had one of these reports, I've said this work takes a long time. I think a lot of you see that I wasn't joking when I said that, right? It takes a long time for a number of different reasons, but there are some things that you have accomplished. So for one, that statement going to the board of supervisors that you all voted to approve the last time we all met, right? That's, that's, uh, I think a substantive achievement, especially because it required this group to be nimble. You had a work plan that was created before COVID. Um, so for you to be able to respond uh, within a few months um, and, and to develop uh, a stance that most of the folks uh, in this group were willing to agree upon is a big deal. Um, the community engagement and funding subcommittee having the listening session that it had uh, and having that listening session be well publicized and well attended, uh, providing a committee chart um, for committee members' authority and responsibilities within the county, right? Just to make decision making uh, within the county more accessible to people 
in the public who may attend these meetings. Uh, the welcome and education sessions during each meeting, right? So Jeff takes on the role of sort of orienter of the public in the community engagement and funding sessions, which responds directly to uh, a work plan item that said, we wanna make all of this more accessible to the community. If people are gonna show up, we want them to know what they're showing up for and what they're doing. Um, and the planning of the, the Youth Advisory Council and the listening session to support that, right? Uh, there are probably some other uh, accomplishments that the Community Engagement and Funding Subcommittee would have made uh, right now in terms of changing meeting dates and times and things like that uh, to accommodate more people, but we're all on Zoom, so those things, you know, don't apply in the same way. Uh, the data subcommittee, right, securing data, which is what drives and informs everything that we're trying to do, right, it, it's a really big undertaking. Uh, and so shout out to not only the data subcommittee, but uh, probation, right, the probation department, uh, because the data subcommittee has been able to get uh, data on an ongoing basis from probation, right? That's not because that's an easy thing. That's not because probation just had staff sitting around who just wanted something to do, right? It's actually very tedious, uh, you know, hard work that the probation department stepped up and were willing to take on because we were asking for it. Uh, and so on behalf of probation, they didn't ask me to say this, but I, I think I'm, you know, I feel pretty confident in saying they would love for you if you represent a, a, a justice agency within the county, uh, they would love for you to join them in doing that, right? And, and stepping up and figuring out how exactly we're gonna get this information. Um, not because it's easy, not because you, you just kind of know exactly who to tap for that, and not because there aren't some troubleshooting things that need to be worked out first, but because that's how we're going to accomplish anything else. Um, so I, beyond that, uh, we've gotten a verbal commitment from the sheriff's office, right, to, to get data as well from the jail management system. Um, and what we are waiting on, if I recall correctly there, John, you can jump in and correct me if I'm wrong, is uh, the sheriff wants to reach out to the other agencies, which uh, would be uh, sort of listed out in that data. If they were the original arresting agency, then we will know that, oh, Antioch PD was the original arrester of this person. So for that reason, uh, the sheriff's wanting to make a courtesy uh, call uh, to, to those agencies to say, hey, I'm gonna be sharing this information with the RJOB. Um, so, but that's a verbal commitment that we have to receive information and we know receiving data uh, as a starting place from where all of our information is going to come has been, you know, a, a quite an ordeal uh, in the county, right? And some of that is because uh, folks are, you know, a little uncomfortable or unsettled about sharing it. Some of it is because, uh, you know, a lot of agencies don't have the, uh, the databases or information systems to hold and report and collect that information. Um, so the fact that, you know, there are two agencies, one of which is already currently sharing data with us and one of which, you know, should be doing so very shortly, I think are, are huge accomplishments that are going to help drive everything else. You heard about the fact that we're going to go toward the uh, Police Chiefs Association and maybe other entities, you know, to ask for data as well. And again, I uh, want to encourage any uh, justice system agencies that are represented here, uh, you know, to please help us out with that if, if at all possible. And, you know, to let's have the conversation if we need to have it about uh, how we I'm can- I'm doing the meeting. Um, the Diversion Subcommittee has put together its list. Uh, I think that is quite an accomplishment that there's a, there's a working list of current diversion programs. Uh, as far as we know, it's been refined to cull things that no longer exist. Um, and from there, you know, we're going to get more information to make uh, recommendations. Um, so those things are, are huge steps to say that we've been set back by missing many months of uh, meeting due to COVID um, and that, you know, so many of these, uh, these data points and these data queries that we want to make, there's, there's not been much of a response or there's not been much of an infrastructure to provide us with that information. Um, so things should only, you know, get uh, better and more detailed from there as we go along. But those are things that I think uh, this group should be proud of uh, in its first year and sort of during um, its first full year, I should say, in, in, in the middle of a pandemic. Um, so 
that's the accomplishments. We talk a little bit about work plan objectives for the next year um, and where we think, you know, uh, some action steps are going to take place that in, that includes making the recommendations from uh, diversion as well as securing data from more uh, uh, agencies, as well as um, uh, the Youth Advisory Council's development and the uh, hopefully the establishment of at least a, 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 an agreed upon model for the Community Capacity Fund going forward. Um, and I think I'll, I'll leave it there and see if anybody has any questions and also from anyone on any of the subcommittees if I've left anything out that should be included in the uh, in the ultimate report. All right, do we have any um, feedback or comments for Chris? And I know um, as, as Chris did mention, uh, we, we met uh, prior to this meeting uh, and uh, what you see and attachment four is not going to be the complete at the end of the year. It's going to be more comprehensive and detailed. Um, so he'll he has much more um, uh, work to do. This is more of the Reader's Digest version of what we uh, have accomplished thus far. Uh, just so you know, when you're before you ask your questions. Anybody? You gonna let them off the hook that easy, huh? I'll ask a question. Um, so will we see the, the longer version before it actually goes back to the Board of Supervisors? Um, I think the answer to that might be uh, dependent upon <laughs> if, if this group, and I'm not suggesting this, I'm just kind of technically speaking, if this, if this group uh, sees fit to call a um, a special session to see it uh, before the end of the year. You don't have another quarterly meeting before the end of the year, and that's when it would be due. So we did want to make sure that we ran at least the substance of it by you, even though it's technically not due for another several weeks, which is why you have the, the shortened version of it now. Um, but I don't personally have an issue with anybody seeing it before it um, is, is submitted. It's just a matter of whether or not you'll see it in a meeting or if we should, uh, you know, sort of make the rounds in terms of December subcommittee meetings, maybe to, to have it there uh, so that everybody can get a look at it. This is Bill. It, it looks like the format that you filled out had limitations on the length, if I'm reading it right. So you don't want to send a much longer report if I'm understanding that correctly. So uh, that is a good point. Here's the thing. Uh, the, the actual report that's going to the uh, Board of Supervisors. So there are two, right? There's the one that you see now, which is a much shorter version of, uh, uh, you know, what can be a whole lot longer. Um, so for the requirements of this shorter version, you basically get the Reader's Digest version of everything that I will say in a, in a much longer format uh, to submit, right? So it's two separate reports. Um, and for this report, the requirements are fulfilled, but we, we can do that without really going into detail as much as I would want to and as much as you all deserve for the work that you've done. So the, the report in the end of the year uh, will, has its own template and requirements and will be much longer. And just to be, just to clarify, so the Board of Supervisors for all advisory bodies, of which this is one, requires that um, they submit kind of a end of year, what did you do report? And because they're getting it from, you know, the 30 or 40 bodies that are out there, uh, there are these limitations, right? Give us the cliff notes so we can actually uh, digest it. At the same time, uh, part of the project of Burns is to provide a comprehensive report to this body. Um, and so because the subject matter overlaps, um, uh, what you see here is kind of the outline, if you will, of what will be in that longer report that um, they're, they're required to do as part of this contract. So um, that's why you have these two reports. They essentially are kind of summarizing the, the, the work that's being done. But um, as Dr. Walker said, um, this had limitations on, on what could all be included in it. So, so we get it in two pieces.
Thanks, Dante, for that uh, explanation. Dr. Walker, for your comments. Any other uh, questions for Chris? I'll say, we, so we have a question in the chat that says, uh, will this group or another be looking at reentry in the future? And I would say, yes, we, we have work plan items that are dedicated specifically to reentries. We will be looking at it for sure. So just to clarify, we will be able to review the full report if we desire to before it's submitted to the board. I didn't hear a yes. Yeah, I think I, what the only thing I'm trying to figure out, and I think it's probably easier the way I just said um, uh, toward the end of my little response to that is if we if we have it ready for December subcommittee meetings, assuming all of our subcommittees are going to be able to meet uh, before folks, you know, celebrate the holidays, um, then that that may be the best uh, means. That way, we don't have to try to call a separate like large quarterly meeting for everybody to see it, but we can, you know, sort of bring it into each, uh, put it on the agenda for each for each subcommittee in December. It should be done by then. So Chris, when will you have it? Because I believe one subcommittee may be meeting early December versus latter December. Yeah, so I, I mean, you know, ideally I would, I would like to have as much time to write as I possibly could. Um, but I think the ask was really something like the end of November to be done with it anyway. So I think it, it you know, I, I'm just going to, you know, work really hard to make sure that all the pages are written before December 1st so that, you know, we make it onto the agendas uh, for all the subcommittees. Okay. And I think, um, you know, one option, obviously, if you don't complete it in time is, is you know, as the, the chair, I'm assuming we can send it out. Uh, for review to our body. Um, it, it doesn't require a vote. Is that correct, Dante? So, I mean, so it's one thing to share information, uh, but I, that would, yeah, you wouldn't want to do that because I would be soliciting kind of uh, responses, right, from, from the group. And so then you'd be having an, uh, a discussion that was outside of the public forum. So, um, you know, typically if there was this information that we just wanted to send so people have, you know, staff would make sure that they have that information. But if we want to kind of have the circle completed where they're pr pr uh, providing commentary, then we should do that at a public meeting. So with that, then, it uh, looks like November 30th is your deadline, Chris. Yeah, have faith in me, John. I'll get it done, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any, uh, any other comments or questions? I don't see anything in chat and I don't see any hands raised. Thanks for your work, Chris. Appreciate it. So are there any um, nominations to approve this um, report as written for the Board of Supes? I'll make that motion. Second. Um, I'll do a roll call. John Loudon? Yes. Stephanie Metley? Yes. Melvin Russell? Yes. Hey. Robin Lepecki? Sorry. So I want you to take care of it. I think I'm taking care of Yes. Uh, Dinah Becton? Yes. Deborah Mason? Oh, I'll come back to Debra. Uh, Lynn Mackey? Yes. William Walker? Yes. Matt Malone? Abstain. Jeff Landau? Yes. Tammy Atlink Badding? Yes. Vanel Ellis? Yes. Lisa French? Yes. Cheryl Sudduth? Thumbs up. She gave a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumb up. Uh, Tamisha Walker. Abstain. 
Jay Levine. Uh, Jay Levine, did I hear a response? Yes. Oh, thank you. A uh, motion carries. Okay, thank you, Monica. You're welcome. So moving on to our uh, next agenda item, which is item number seven. And I believe that's me uh, discussing the request for data from the police Chiefs association. Uh, that's going to be under attachment number five. So the, um, the, the long and short of this is the data subcommittee um, has reached a point where we believe next steps for uh, our, our subcommittee and the body uh, is to reach out uh, and gather data from other agencies besides the, uh, the county uh, probation and the sheriff's office uh, and the juvenile um, system, but to actually try to get data from the other uh, law enforcement agencies that uh, come in contact uh, with citizens. Uh, and the format that we, we discussed um, would be making a presentation uh, from uh, either the body or the subcommittee uh, to the police chiefs association, um, outlining you know essentially what our goals are, uh, what we're trying to accomplish, uh, the history of this this organization, the body, um, and soliciting uh, buy-in from from that association in regards to uh, the data that we're trying to capture. Um, at this point, it looks like. We are obviously looking at race, ethnicity, gender, geography, uh, and offense. And we can always have discussion on, in addition to that, what else are we, we seeking? But primarily what we're trying to do is, is to further uh, the process by getting uh, ahead of this group or in front of this group uh, and making a pitch. The, um, the question arose uh, in discussion uh, and through comments from people either that are part of the group or outside of this police chiefs association, uh, who would be um, the best entity to to make the presentation, if you will? It would, should it be a you know another uh, law enforcement agency that's a part of the group? Should it be someone from the sheriff's office, the DA's office? Uh, should it be um, you know neutral parties? And so that part. I, uh, Stephanie and I, when we met, we, we wanted to open up for discussion uh, because we believe the, the presentation uh, is gonna be critical uh, to uh, the participation and buy-in when we, we make the ask for this, this information. So that's the background of it. Uh, the, the group is, is looking to move forward uh, beyond what we have now and takes further steps into the process. And this is how we plan to do it. At some point, we'll um, eventually go out to the uh, the mayors and the city council members uh, uh, in in their format. But right now, we want to start off with the police chiefs association. I spoke with our sheriff, um, and he he's on board uh, with uh, this type of uh, presentation. Uh, he just believes that it's for that particular group. It's important to have the right uh, presenter so that it doesn't look um, adversarial. It doesn't look like uh, we're, we're dictating you know, from one organization, government or organization to another. So right. that essentially it, it just looks uh, neutral. Uh, and by being neutral, you, he, he believes there might be more buy-in. So, and those are just thoughts. Not, it doesn't have to be, those aren't facts. Those, that was just his opinion by being a member of that particular association. Um, and I will say that I'm not. Uh, I know BISA sits on that group, and, and I, I don't know. They probably have presentations uh, every month from you know a variety of different vendors and topics. Uh, but we we want to try to um, make a pitch as well. So I'll open it up for questions, comments, feedback, ideas. Is there a um, is there a particular week every month that this meeting is held so that we could you know if we if we, if it's not going to be this month presumably we we can kind of plan for 
you know, a target date? Yes, typically the meeting is held on the um, fourth Wednesday of the month, but this month is going to be held on the third Mondays. I mean, third Wednesday since Thanksgiving is the fourth Wednesday. So the next meeting is on the 18th of this month. And then I don't know that there will be a meeting in December. And Bisa, isn't it correct that um, there's a host agency and you have to go through their um, clerical or their secretary in order to become, uh, to get agendized? Or is that uh, not correct? So if you guys just let me know when you want to present, um, then I can coordinate through the uh, chair, which is the police chief from Martinez right now. Okay. Paul. So if you just give me a date, I can, I can get it on the agenda. And uh, I agree. I think it, it does take the right person to present to make sure that it doesn't seem like, you know, there's this adversarial that we're trying to do something that's, um, you know, going to out them or I don't know. Um, I think I, I, I would nominate John Loudon to do it. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, that's a possibility. Uh, you know, the, the, the sheriff, uh, and, I, and I don't, I'm not on the group side, I don't know the dynamics. So when I'm, you know, the sheriff is obviously, we're gonna share our information. His thoughts were, he, he just felt that um, if, if I represented the sheriff, it would be looking like the sheriff as a whole, because I represent the office, um, is once again, you know, trying to um, impose or dictate or uh, impose her will. Uh, and that, and maybe that's not the case uh, of the dynamics in the room there, but I don't mind being a, pro a part of that process. I know we suggested that Chris um, obviously be a part of the process because he can, he is, uh, he can provide a, a different perspective than, than mine coming into the room talking about, you know, just the, the bare facts of what I'm looking for, uh, but the historical issues and, and, and the benefits to the community as well. But we, we believe it should be not just one person, but perhaps, you know, a, a, a couple of our, our, our members. Now, having said that, with Zoom, it might be a little different than, you know, showing up, you know, in a, in a live meeting and making a, a presentation. But um, I'm open to that if you feel that that's, um, you know, if it's, if it would be receptive. So I'm wondering, I think if, Robin, I'm wondering if Bisa or John have suggestions and I, and I'd also like to um, suggest that Dante be part of this process, even though I know he's, he's technically staff and not part of the body, but I think in terms of his experience in the county and and history with this organization and with and the the office he works for i think he'd be a good representative so i would say i, I think that the recommendation is to really um really discuss with the group what we're trying to do and that's so to um you know, make sure that we have the, the correct data to make the right recommendations for overall consistency uh, across the county. So I think if they understand um, as a group that it, it's really not going to be a problem. It's not a it's not a hostile group or anything like that. So I, I, I don't want to put too much on it and, and us think too deeply about this. I just think that somebody needs to come in there to give a brief history kind of explain where we're going and what we're trying to do and what we need from them. And I, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. And Tamisha had her hand raised. Tamisha, you oh, see it. Um, so this is, you know, I'm hearing language like adversarial and contention and all of that. I mean, like, it is what it is. Like, if you're going to feel that way, you're going to feel that way no matter who presents or asks you for anything. I just don't want it to be a lot of systems folks or law enforcement doing the presentation to each other just because it's going to make them feel comfortable. I would prefer if there was somebody from this body who was a, a part of like the community or a community group did the presentation probably with a systems partner and did it like that. I don't feel comfortable um, otherwise just 
because we're trying to say like, oh, we want to make sure that it isn't taken adversarially or with some contention because they might feel some kind of way. I mean, the climate that we're in right now, everybody feeling some kind of way. And we're trying to get a job done. So I'm just, I mean, is it a way to mix it up so that it doesn't look like the community is being locked out of this process? Absolutely. I think that, that that's, I mean, there's there's a good opportunity there. I don't think that I mean, we should, you know, lock anybody out of this. This is Jeff. Maybe I would just uh, chime in too to say that um, I I'm, was understanding from um, Assistant Chief Loudon that, that it uh, that Chris would also be part of this conversation, um, and I think could solve, play an important role. I mean, I I'm also receptive to what Kamisha is saying that um, this needs to be presented consistent with that this really is emerging out of this community group and it's not. Um, represented as just a law enforcement perspective. And also I feel that uh, having sheriff as part of the conversation is going to build credibility in that space, I think, especially if we also have uh, Chief French that's sitting um, in the group, then that can provide the additional context. But I think, uh, right, if we have interest and availability of another uh, leading community voice to put the the contact. I think that's good also. And John, correct me if I'm wrong, you all will already be presenting to the group about um, the data that you're going to be providing, correct? So we are uh, the county, we're going to be uh, providing the uh, jail management system data. Uh, Chris talked about that before. Um, the data that is a part of our report is um, race, race, ethnicity, gender, geography, offense, the booking date, the arresting agency, the charges, the release date, and then separately we'll have a disposition report which talks about those who've been sentenced or non-sentenced. Uh, the sheriff, since it's our, since we're the keepers of the data, and obviously uh, we're releasing um, information like the who arrested, the sheriff just wanted to go to the, the Chiefs Association group and give them a courtesy heads up that we're gonna be releasing that data um, before I provided it to the group for public dissemination. So I believe at the next meeting, he plans to do that if he, if he hasn't done so already, but um, he was gonna let them know that JMS data uh, I'll be releasing to this body. So it's more of a courtesy notice. Mm -hmm. And I think it is important that we have um, a diverse group presenting. I think now though is the question who's willing to actually do the presenting. Um, and so, I mean, that's up to us as a body to figure out who that's gonna be. And um, I think that's what we need to know now, who from this group would like to present. Co-chairs, Stephanie. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm fine with it. I, I'm already kind of at a lot of different tables, um, and so it would be great if anybody else could volunteer. I see uh, Tamisha volunteered someone, but I don't know if she's or Cheryl's aware of that. <laughs> Deborah, one last act before before you leave, or I'm, I'd be willing to go. I I just think um, if it were to be Dante and you and Chris, you're very representative of the group. You're speaking on behalf of the group. I hear Tamisha's concerns, but. Um, I don't, I don't see it as, I don't know how the word adversarial came up. I don't see it as adversarial at all. I see it as community groups trying to work collaboratively with law enforcement and groups to make things better 
for the residents of our county. So Cheryl says she can go to that meeting and it's two Chris Chris's on here. So are y'all using Chris short for Christopher? Yes. I was, I'm sorry. Christopher James is who I was referring to. Is are are you a part of the community? Is is Christopher a part of the community? He's from the I Burns think the thought Institute. was to have Chris, but to also have two members from this body outside of this. Okay. I think the point was with Christopher James is that we, you know, we hired Burns Institute uh, for a reason. Um, and this is a part of our process. And that's why we want it to be inclusive, uh, you know, of, of him and the process. Uh, ideally, if we miss some steps in, in a presentation, he would be there, uh, you know, to shore up, you know, the missing link, if you will. But uh, we felt just in pre-conversation that his presence was vital too. Uh, as, as our um, advisory to this body. But we're not, we're not married to that idea. We're open to suggestions. Well, Cheryl says she's willing to go and she thinks that having Christopher there will work too, as well. She recommends that he, he does also attend. So I'm fine with that. I just know that these are people from our community working in our community with a very vulnerable population. And I just prefer to have people in our community from our community in that space as well. So I feel comfortable with Cheryl attending and she said she would if that's okay with her. Can we get a can we get a recap of the final group if it's a group or if it's just two people whatever we're doing and also um, in addition to that I would I would throw out again the question of uh, date right so it, are we are we going to shoot for the November eighteenth date which would mean whoever's going to be a part of this group probably needs to get together between now and then to figure out roles and and materials and all of that jazz, uh, or will we shoot for a, a later date? Does availability might might factor into people's commitment? The, the, nine, the November 18th meeting is at 9.30. And uh, I think Bisa is correct. There most likely will not be another meeting until January after that. I guess I would say maybe we decide who's going to represent and then they decide how much time they feel they need to be able to be prepared. If they think they can do it by November, that's fine. And if not, they can have until January. Personally, I'm fine with the proposal of Chris, John, Dante, and Cheryl. If they're all fine with going, that is a good representation from our group. Cheryl says she can make that. Yeah, I'll check with um, the sheriff for, for me because there's two members already on that. Uh, I know he's going to be discussing JMS. Um, so if, if he's in support of it, he may make the pitch as well. Uh, but if not, I'll, I'm good for the presentation. Yeah, and I should say that I did not check and see what's on our agenda to see how many presentations. So is it, I think it would be safer to plan for January as opposed yeah. Um, November, and I apologize for that. I didn't think about what was already on the agenda. That's 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 okay. Um, is there a um, is there similar to sort of these meetings? There's a a, a, a date by which we kind of need to have materials in if we want to present them and share them. Is there a similar uh, sort of deadline or requirement with the Police Chiefs Association? 
Um, there's, I, I don't think that we do send out an agenda at least a week before, but I'm not sure what, what the deadline is. I could get that and, and send it. Bisa, um, <clears throat> will it be the same chair in January or, or is there some rotation that will be happening? Yes, there will be the same chair in January. And I guess just for the record, you know, just the will of the group to have me participate, I, I wouldn't have an issue with that. But obviously, um, at the direction of the group. <clears throat> so as I know we're going to vote on this, um, and the question is, are we voting uh, conceptually with the presentation or the presentation and the actual presenters? I think we should include the presenters too, given our conversation. Okay. So with that said, is there any feedback um, in regards to Dante being a part of the process? While I'm unmuted, I say I'm in favor. Anybody else? Uh, pro or con against Dante being a part of this before we uh, wrap it up in a motion. Agreed. I agree. Okay. I'm always a pro Dante. And just for clarity, so I, so I have my notes. I have um, myself, Cheryl, Christopher James, Dante, I know Bisa's name was initially um, mentioned, but I don't know, um, was that in follow-up, um, what, what that, what, what does that mean? Is it is five of us, four of us? What do you, what's your suggestion, uh, Bisa, as a member of that body? Well, it is a Zoom call, so, um, <laughs> you know, to, to, to coordinate a bunch of people on a Zoom call isn't, I mean, we're, we're all on here. I, okay. I guess you guys coordinate your presentation. It will be fine. I would say ab absolutely no more than five, though. All right. So, uh, so I don't think I need to be included in the group. You and, do not? Uh, no, I do not. Um, and DA Becton is also a member of the group, so. OK. Five, five sounds like a lot, but I, I mean, I guess it's really up to the group, but I, I would say that you probably need about three people maximum. But I don't think it, at the end of the day, it really matters. Okay, so we'll narrow it down to four. Uh, Christopher, James, Cheryl, Sadhuth, Dante, and myself. How's that? Sounds good. I see heads <laughs> nodding. Yep. All right. So with that said, on this agenda item, do we have any motions to move forward for a presentation uh, to the Police Chiefs Association uh, at a date to be determined in January and presented by the four aforementioned names. You need a motion? Yes. So move. Yeah. Oh, I'll second. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Before I get ahead of myself, before we have a vote on this, is there any um, public comment? I, ha I have a comment. Um, I see that the Burns mm -hmm. Institute actually made another recommendation for stop data. Um, I think it would be beneficial to have information about the initial stop or the initial law enforcement contact and can extrapolate or make correlations with that information. I think it would be important to, to know that information. So um, I, I would hope that this um, body would consider adding or requesting information 
on the initial stop. Um, Mr. Pearson, can I ask what, when you say initial stop, such as in addition to what we outlined here, what, what additional information would you, would you like? Um, this is specifically about the arrest information and things that come after the, after the arrest. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm specifically talking about information of the initial stop that led to the arrest. You know, the initial post was, was it a traffic stop? Was oh, this traffic related? Okay. Or was <clears throat> it gotcha. related to other, another incident? Okay. Like whether or not it was a self-initiated um, contact or a dispatch to contact. Exactly. Okay. Is there any other public comment? I would just say, uh, I really appreciate that comment and you bringing that up because John, I wanted to ask you and, and maybe other folks who are part of that. And I don't know about the report, the disposition reports that come out of JMS, but the rest of the information that you outlined as it is in JMS, is there any reason we shouldn't ask for those same data points? Well, JMS will provide charges, but JMS does not tell us well, why the officer um, made the, the stop or was the officer in a pursuit or was the officer, um, which was self-initiated that he saw it he or she saw it, or was the officer dispatched to the house where the domestic violence took place and made the arrest? JMS does not, on its on its own, um, show that. Right. I, I, so my question is, in in addition to um, to that information, right, which I, I you know I think is good to have. When you outlined what we will be getting from the sheriff's office in terms of JMS, you mentioned. Uh, in addition to, say, race, ethnicity, gender, geography, offense, mm -hmm. uh, sort of date of uh, intake or date of release, these sorts of things. Like, I, I'm asking if we could get, if, if it's, if there's any reason why we shouldn't ask for those same pieces of information from the police chiefs association. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. You're, yeah. The So I have nine data points. So I have four more on top of yours. So you're saying right. these, these nine Okay, so I have just a recap, race, ethnicity, gender, geography, offense, booking date, arresting agency, charges, and release date or disposition. Is there anything else you'd like to see? Uh, just the, the, you know, how the staff was initiated as uh, Mr. Pearson mentioned. That's the only other thing. Okay, all right. I could just tell you from from a law enforcement perspective that 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 information without looking at each individual case is hard to, mm -hmm. to extract <clears throat> not that you can run a report on how those cases are initiated each particular case would have to be reviewed so I, I'm, I'm not saying not to request it but I'm, I'm sure there will be huge pushback because of the the staffing it will take to go through each report to get that information. <clears throat> yeah, as Bisa said, you'd have to actually open up every report um, and read it in order to find out because the reports don't indicate whether they were self-initiated or dispatched or um, it's usually in the synopsis that someone typed or wrote out uh, exactly what the how that contact took place um, so that would be um, it's a challenge but we can definitely make that uh, that ask and see where we get but I think another portion of that would be to um, you know if if that's too too large of a task for law enforcement agencies maybe the one of the recommendations might be that we somehow um, keep that information on the front end like find a mechanism to 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 pinpoint that information on the front end so that we can easily extrapolate that information and then on the other thing is that um, by 2022 I think most law enforcement agencies there's there's a tiered system has to provide stop data on their um, stop data the RIPA data um, 
every law enforcement agency will have to pro provide that information. So that might be another way to, to gather that particular information. But I know that that's a little ways down the line too. Jill, did that, did that answer your question? Because your question is, could that field be added to the database? Um, it didn't really, uh, it's just a, a question, like as the sheriff is going to have a new case management system, if that's something that could be added in, I'm not sure at what point in time that would be collected or, or what information. Yeah, so we, um, we're gonna start collecting our RIPA data in January. Uh, we already have it out beta testing it right now. So January, we start collecting. So we'll have it for the sheriff's office, but it's all based upon the size of the organization. How many peace officers you have uh, determines when you have to start collecting. So we start collecting January. We have to report out uh, no later than April of 2022, the, the results of 2021. And for the size of my agency, I don't start reporting out until 2022. Any other public uh, comment or questions? I don't see anything in chat. Uh, any hands raised at all? This is Jeff. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. I was just gonna say that uh, I'll speak in favor of the idea of capturing upfront if we can. I mean, I know that uh, we're kind of saying, a, a few voices have said, uh, is it possible? And perhaps we could, and maybe just, uh, make explicit my point on it, uh, would that be, think it would be good if we can um, to try to capture in the future, knowing that, um, you know, responding to what uh, Chief French is saying, that it's going to be a major lift to try to do that with what's already existing, but um, something as a checkbox or even better to have a, a specific code or something that could specify uh, this was not only um, perhaps officer initiated, but this was the, the reason given, um, uh, which could also be important to know, was this a tail light or a report of um, there being an assault or whatever might have been the reason that could help provide context too. So um, knowing that there's limitations, just uh, as one member of the body speaking in favor of making the request moving forward, I think would be worthwhile. All right, sounds good. I don't see any, any other um, hands raised or anything in chat. Uh, so we wanna go back to those motions. Yeah. We have a motion right now by uh, Dr. Walker, but we don't have a second yet. I'll second. Oh. Okay, there you go. I'll do a roll call vote. Uh, John Loudon? Yes. Definitely Metley? Yes. Melvin Russell? Yes. Robin Lepetsky? Yes. Diana Becton? Yes. Deborah Mason? Yes. Lynn Mackey? Yes. Bill Walker? Yes. Matt Malone? Staying. Jeff Landau? Yes. Tammy Appling Kabadi? Yes. Ronell Ellis? Yes. Visa French? Yes. Cheryl Siddharth? Oh, okay. I see the, yeah, the thumbs up. Um, Tamisha Walker? Yes. Jay Levine? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Uh, our next agenda item is uh, we're going to 
revisit item number eight. Uh, we, we actually um, discussed this after a presentation and uh, we never really closed a chapter on this, but this is the procedural justice and implicit bias training uh, and the advanced racial equity training. Um, if memory serves me correct, the last time uh, we talked about this, there was a presentation um, that was made and then it, it we as a group um, were indecisive on whether or not we wanted this particular, um, the appointed or hired um, uh, trainers or presenters to provide the training. Um, but my understanding is that we're we're running a little short on time as far as being able to uh, continue with the process of using this contract to train. And um, so we need to de determine uh, what we're gonna do moving forward if we're gonna proceed with implicit bias training uh, via Zoom, I believe it is, um, or electronic um, method. So Dante, you may have a little bit more feedback on that. Um, yeah, certainly. So. Um... When we last spoke, I think, uh, so initially we had a schedule for two meetings, I want to say uh, around April-ish um, sometime um, earlier this year. And when we, the group, when we last had our quarterly meeting, we thought we would turn that from two into four. Um, I think where we landed was that we'd rather just do two longer meetings versus trying to get four meetings on, each, on everybody's schedule. Uh, if we move forward, there were also questions about um, um, the experience um, of the trainers and also how the curriculum was developed. Um, and so the questions, so there were, I think about three questions um, that I left with, which was to um, bring forward information about who um, the trainer would be, so biographies. Two, uh, get a bibliography of the material that was used to develop the training. Um, and then three, um, attempt to address the issue around whether under other funding sources existed for, for this. So starting with the, the last question, um, I, I did check in and, and this is pretty much what we have um, at, at this point. I think uh, we're in a situation where um, things have gotten a little tight because of COVID. Um, and so uh, it's just not a, things just aren't as available as they have been in the past. Uh, I've also had, uh, had a meeting with Fog Rake so that I could raise the, the two questions around bios and bibliography that were what that was requested, and there's an attachment to um, to this report uh, that does have the biographies of the three individuals who would work together: Shanti Bryan, Burke Brown, and Christy Chandler, um, and information about each of them. And then the final page uh, speaks to the material that was used to develop the curriculum. So um, with that, the question that, that we have now is whether you would like me to um, try to continue forward with fog break to get these two trainings scheduled. It probably at this point will be sometime early next year. Um, or, if, or if there's no interest in that, and uh, we just want to try to move in another direction, we'll explore what that might look like um, at a future time. So Dante, if, if fog break is not used, then what happens to those those funds? Are they are they held in reserve for a future um, trainer? So, or? So, what, so what we did was you know, we had a contract with them. I, I want to say um, it's probably been a couple of years now. I know we had to extend it most recently because of COVID, um, and we were we've been working with departments, and so there's been uh, interest expressed by some of the departments to have them come back and do additional training. And so um, I think that, that would be the, the first stop uh, what would be from some of the departments that have asked about, about this. Uh, they had, they did an initial training and then they went and they did an advanced training with some of our departments. And so um, there, there's been those requests. So I think that's ultimately what would happen if we didn't do this. Um, part of the conversation with them was trying to get a sense of how much time it would take to do these trainings and what they had left. And so, um, it's not a lot to do both. It's probably going to be uh, one or the other. So, so we'd have to see what happens from there. And are there any repercussions for not uh, fulfilling the contract or completing the contract? 
No, no. I mean, so if the contract expired and we didn't do any extension, then there would just be because um, they're all reimbursement contracts. So um, they just wouldn't perform the service and then therefore wouldn't get reimbursed. So um, I believe I, I want to say this contract goes through the end of the fiscal year. So there's still uh, you know eight months left on this. Eight months or so. So is there any uh, feedback or questions of regarding this? Uh, I know we, we talked about it, uh, but is there any follow-up conversation? Cheryl? Hi, it's, it's Tamisha. Um, I think it would be good to um to try to move forward and schedule for next year. I had a chance to look at some of the materials. Sorry about that. Um so oh go ahead. I didn't see <laughs> in the material specific to anti-blackness, but I'm not sure if that's included in implicit bias trainings. Um, so I, I mean, I don't really know. I'm, I'm also just a little conflicted. I've had a lot of these trainings and I'm wondering, was the training just for this body or was this body doing the training so the community could join? Um, I, um, it's, I'm a little foggy on while we're doing it as a group in the first place when I'm assuming a lot of folks have had it on, have had implicit bias training on here. Either way, if, there, if it's a yay or a nay, I'm good with it. And it looks like uh, Cheryl had a good comment and she still objects. Um, I wasn't here for the discussion, so um, oh, man, I mean, I, 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 I'm anywhere. Just, I'm just kind of wondering stuff. what were some of the concerns that came up about this particular company, or what were some of the reasons that people wanted to go with this company, other than the contract that we already have. I know some of the, um, I'm just going by memory, the, some of the feedback uh, in regards to the, the presenters were they didn't necessarily represent um, our target audience of you know, minorities um, in relationship to presenting the topic itself. Um, and that was, that seemed to be uh, of concern. Um, I believe uh, and that was on the negative side. On the positive side, uh, um, there were were those who were in, a, in attendance who actually um, received the training from Bog Break and uh, thought it was good. I, I believe Jill might have been one of those recipients. I'm not sure, but I know um, the training from from those who had, who Bog Break um, presented for the county. The comments were like, "Yeah, the, the presentation was good." Uh, I remember. Just some of the, the comments were, uh, we, we were looking for, um, I guess, credibility in regards to uh, folks presenting that actually know, that live, breathe, and, and walk in the same you know, shoes and manner um, that we do. If you're really trying to uh, you know, uh, create a bridge and, and display uh, or open up the, the mindset of implicit bias, and you have to have the right people um, presenting. And that there was this uh, dialogue where we felt that maybe they weren't the right people. So, and I'm summarizing what I took from that. And Stephanie, I would just add that the other layer was, uh, which was, it wasn't 
negative or positive. It was just, uh, I think, empty information, which is um, what is the curriculum? Where did it come from? Um, how was it developed? Um, and so I uh, wanted to get more information around around that um, to ensure that it was, uh, I think, in a similar vein from a, a place uh, that people would feel good trusting or being a part of what was discussed. Thank you. And I don't, was Tamisha's question answered about this being open to the community or is it just for this body? It would be a public meeting. So um, uh, since enough of you, would, the expectation of enough of uh, this membership would be in attendance that we would notice it as a, a regular meeting because of that. And, um, obviously, then couldn't exclude the public. So I think the approach would be to treat it as such. And Dante, would it be safe to assume if if we did not go with fog break for this, at least through this fiscal year, we're going with nothing? Is that correct? Yeah, there probably wouldn't be anything. Um, yeah, def definitely not this fiscal year. We'd be looking to um, try to identify you know, I think part of it too is the process, right? Um, so uh, if we wanted to go in a different direction, then identify the funding and the process that would need to be done to um, secure uh, that trainer or those services. So um, would this be part of a larger discussion? This was a situation where um, it happened to be, um, we were already working in one project and I believe Blair brought the question to this group, would there be interest? And when the answer was yes, then we went back and kind of restructure some things with them to make room. Um, and so that's how we kind of got here. Uh, in the normal sense, um, we probably would go through a different process to secure um, uh, services of this type. And so um, everyone, it uh, Cheryl's uh, left her comments. Looks like she's going to uh, be heading out, but uh, her objections weren't to um, the training, but just it's the company itself that's providing the training. Are there any other comments um, or questions regarding this? Yeah, Tamisha has her hand, hand up. I guess my question is to you, Dante, is it a way to, because I get the the budget issue and, you know, we don't know what next year is going to look like as far as the pandemic and the fiscal needs of the county. Is it possible to go to forego this particular contract and company and in our report to the Board of Supervisors potentially make, I mean, could this group make a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors to al like where possible to allocate funds for a process to find a new company next year? I'm just trying to figure out um, how we could, how we could still do it, but go through a different process and find a different company um, and also just understanding that we're in difficult fiscal times right now. To me, I think that's, you know, that certainly could be done. If that would be the role of the group is to um, uh, ensure that that was part of your presentation to the board um, as part of your activities that you went down this road, you reached a point where you had a fork in the road and the way in which you went was to say, hey, we actually want to do it. Um, a solicitation of somebody who better fits our needs, whatever it might be, and then ask the board to um, to support that that request. So yeah, I think that's definitely doable. Dante, was this training by fog break uh, intended to be um, like one time or like one season or ongoing? Yeah, there, there was no conversations about. Um, ongoing or refreshes, anything like that.
Any other questions? Um, being a county employee, I'm a little reluctant to pass up uh, the money in the bank, if you will, but uh, you know, that's just my, my, my feedback next fiscal year uh, when we present this. Um, I'm not sure if there's any guarantees of what that would look like as far as any, you know, the training, especially training budgets are typically what we start shaving off uh, first historically. That's just a comment. I guess my question then is, is like, is there, you know, what, what harm would come from proceeding with this? Um, and, you know, is it sufficient to, to break it off? Whether harm and towards sort of, uh, you know, a poor, you know, a, a, a lack of alignment with, the, with what we're hoping for, or just the opportunity cost of time spent elsewhere. Any comments on that from Jay? This is Jeff. Um, while I didn't uh, initially voice the concerns about fog break, I, I do think that, um, especially if there's a somewhat critical mass, I guess I'd say within the group that feels like this is not really representing this tone, this speaker, whatever it may be, content that we're looking at doesn't uh, represent the mm, opinions of the viewpoints isn't representative of um, kind of the tone of the group here, then I think there is a risk of it being more than even neutral. It could potentially be harmful if that's the case and that it wouldn't be um, presenting this in a way that is gonna be conducive to our moving forward and a shared understanding. I, I would be concerned if you know there are members of the group that are feeling not on board with it, that if it moves forward, it may further push us apart than bring together because um, I think there needs to be that shared buy-in um, credibility with everyone to tackle or at least begin to tackle issues like this because it is so fraught with people's emotions and um, defenses and everything um, that if we can start off at a place where we feel on board with the people that are leading it, um, even that's not a guarantee to it being successful, but I think it, if we can try to have that as the baseline, it's worth pursuing. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. And this, 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 this is Bill. I, I kind of agree with Jeff. I think if there are, if we're going to undertake this this type of training, I think it has to be done with commitment and with enthusiasm. And if there's some concern, particularly from members of our committee, about the quality of it, I don't think we should um, take it on just because it's a budget item. I, I would like to also let the group know that being announced today is the appointment of a chief equity officer for the health services department, uh, a person uh, who's coming from Los Angeles who has a lot of experience in, in, uh, in issues of equity and disparities and also in training. So we may have some other resources that we can be, begin to tap also. So uh, I, I guess I, I agree with Jeff. I don't think we should pursue something that we're not all uh, committed and enthusiastic about. It's not really the money, it's also the use of our time. I, I agree as well. I think, I think we kind of um, <clears throat> jumped on this one entity because we had a con the county had a contract with them. I think of this group in particular because of the nature of what we do and, and the high level of participants um, and our backgrounds and how many of us have already gone through some sort of this training that we as a group should decide what it is that we want and then go ask for funding and then identify the organization or trainer that meets our needs rather than just go with something that's available because they've already been hired by the county. So I, I would make a motion that we um, not pursue the fog break 
um, option right now and instead that we seek funding for this purpose and at a later meeting decide as a group what our goals would be for this kind of training. Second. More comments or are we ready to vote? We'll open it up for um, body comments and if not public comment. Having none, we did have two motions, so we're ready for that, that roll call vote. Okay, um, John Loudon. Yes. Stephanie I Metley. Yes. Melvin Russell. Yes. Robin Lepetsky. Yes. Dinah Beckton. Yes. Deborah Mason. Yes. Lynn Mackey. Yes. Bill Walker. Yes. Matt Malone. Abstain. Jeff Landau. Yes. Tammy Atling Kabading. Yes. Linnell Ellis. Yes. Pisa French. Cheryl Sudas. And Tamisha Walker. Yes. Motion carries. Oh, sorry, Jay Levine. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, yes. Uh, yeah, motion carries. <laughs> that was quick. I wish I could get my hour back from the last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, um, looks like we're at our agenda item number nine, which essentially for us is next steps uh, moving forward uh, in regards to, um, I believe we're going to talk about whether or not we we were, were going to meet um, and, and when meet for the rest of the year, which I assume we're not because it's the holidays. Uh, but if so, um, what that looked like, and if not, um, when would we be meeting again? That was one of our um, holdover items. Was there anything else, Monica, that were that was hanging that you're aware of? I think Dante may have more comments. Sorry. Yeah, I think, think there was conversation about potentially introducing um, the members who would. Uh, Correct. Yeah. I mean, on in January. Yeah. So we're going to, yeah, we'll have, um, we're, we're losing uh, some members and we're gaining some members. And uh, we, in, in this particular um, uh, section, uh, item number nine, we were going to actually introduce any new members uh, who are joining us and acknowledge those who were. Uh, would not be here any longer. So did you want to start with that, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, introducing the members and giving them an opportunity to, to um, speak potentially, or did you want to end with that? Uh, how about we uh, start with our outgoing um, members. I know we have, uh, well, we, sh we should have one that Deborah uh, is with us right now um, and, and take some comments for her and acknowledge her. Um, she's been with us actually through the 2006, was it 16 we started or 17, I believe, for the Racial Justice Task Force charter member. So um, she is going to be transitioning out uh, of the uh, the body as well as the subcommittee. So any comments from Deborah? Um, <clears throat> I wasn't prepared. Uh, it's been very meaningful and sometimes very frustrating work. Um, I was a little late on because I'm was got caught up in watching election results. And while it looks like the election's heading in a a good direction. I'm very disheartened that there wasn't a complete repudiation of the things that we've seen happen in the last four years. I thought there'd be more people reject, rejecting that. So as you move forward, I think you still have a lot of work to do and uh, a lot of change to make. And it's uh, uh, something I'm passionate about. I might pop in and listen to your meetings on occasion. And I wish you well. And I um, 
really commend all of you because it's not easy work. It's not easy discussions. It can be very frustrating. But for the most part, all of you have shown up on a regular basis and participated. And um, it's been a pleasure being able to work with all of you. And I'm not leaving because I really want, I mean, to leave. It's more that the way this system's set up for more people to be able to participate, the particular school board uh, participant would rotate every two years off and give another district a, a opportunity to participate. So thank you all. Exactly, and so uh, while Mount Diablo will be rotating off, it'll be uh, West Contra Costa Unified that'll be rotating on and that representative will be a woman by the name of Lashante Smith. For those of you who, you who know Lashante, uh, she's not here in the meeting today, um, but the other uh, current member that is here today that will no longer be continuing is um, Tammy. So Mr. Chair, if you maybe wanted to give her an opportunity to speak. I didn't know Tammy was leaving us. <laughs> so I, I like Deborah. Uh, is not prepared, but what I will say is that, um, you know, the journey around the racial justice, it, it's just a long journey and mentally I, I'm tired. So it's, uh, I'm finding, I'm trying to like step back in, in various areas that I'm involved in to say, okay, how can I shift my energy where I can be a little bit more effective so that's part of what's going on, why I have made, you know, did the commitment of two years. Um, I'm still very much involved. And so I probably will, like Deborah, pop into meetings here and there. Uh, but you'll see me out and about. I, I see all of your names. I'm there in Contra Costa County. So I'm sure we'll run into each, in each one at, at another point, phase in my life. But it's really been an interesting process. And I enjoyed it so thank you thank you Tammy for your 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 work in this body and hopefully you'll see the results when we as we continue down the road we're making progress and uh, I think we'll we'll gain some momentum um, very 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 soon here so thank you all right so that's that is it for your um, members who will be leaving the body um, you do have four new, uh, new individuals. I, I believe three of them are here. Um, so the first one is um, Jim Paulson, who was with the court, as everyone knows, has transitioned off. And so the new appointee from the court um, is Matthew Malone. Um, actually, Dante, uh, Jay Levine will be leaving the body as well. Oh, you're <laughs> right, you're right, you're right. This is that, that is. Apollo, thank you, thank you. So, thank you, Monica. Uh, so, so listen to her, not me. That's that's a that's a recurring theme in this office. Jay, of course. Uh, <laughs> I'll assume that that means that you uh, you want me to stay. Um, uh, yeah, I um, my wife is God willing about to give birth um, sometime late November, early December. Um, and at this time in my life, it's just, there's a lot going on and I need to step back somewhere. Um, and, uh, and so I'm you know, sad to not continue on with the racial justice oversight body. Um, I also feel like we're just getting some great momentum going. Um, so I'm excited to see where it goes. And I know there's a lot of amazing faith leaders um, in this county who are, uh, are amazing advocates for racial justice and will continue to um, bring a faith perspective. But I do want to just urge all of you to consider me a resource. Um, if there's any time you need to involve or mobilize the Jewish community or the interfaith community, please feel free to reach out to me and I can do anything I can to help uh, help this work go forward. So thank you all for, um, for these two years. And also Dante, I wanna just acknowledge um, that Edward Williams will not be continuing as well, uh, but he couldn't join us today. But I just wanna, you know, the rest of the members to know about that. Correct, so I guess with that now, um, I've already jumped the gun with Mr. Malone, um, but uh, that will be the new court representative, uh, Matthew Malone. I don't know. Did you want me to say something? Sorry. 
introduce myself, I guess. Is that? Yeah, I think I think so. I think sure. I just who you are. It would be nice. Sure. Sure. Uh, Matt Malone, uh, I am chief counsel for the Contra Costa Superior Court. Uh, very recent addition, so I'm just, uh, hence the abstentions and just trying to listen and kind of get a, a feel for what the committee is doing um, and uh, to provide what help I can. So I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to it. And thank you for the opportunity. Great. Um, the next member is a gentleman by the name of Michael Pearson. Thank you, thank you. Um, Michael Pearson, I am a attorney and I will be, I guess, filling the seat on the community representative for individuals with prior personal criminal and juvenile system involvement. Um, as a youth, I had experience personally in the juvenile system and as a, an adult, I had some experience. Um, fortunately, I, I was able to turn things around and and become an attorney. And I'm also on the Contra Costa County Bar Association Board of Directors. And I'm looking forward to, to working with all, all of you. Um, don't get creeped out if you see me on LinkedIn that you see someone has looked at you. So don't, don't get creeped out, I'm not stalking. Great, great. Well, thank you very much for, for joining the team here. Um, so the next uh, new member will be, and I, I don't want to screw up your last name, Apollo, but uh, so maybe you can introduce yourself. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, my name is Apollo Solse. Um, I am a pastor at the Bay Church. I believe I will be taking a JC um, from the faith community. Um, I also work uh, really heavily in the school districts working with uh, at-risk teens. Um, I also started a nonprofit called Culture Changers, uh, working more in preventative care um, to prevent students from going into juvenile hall and uh, and working on things like um, uh, working through their education, how to apply for college, how to apply for jobs and trade school, um, how to interview, um, how, to, how to engage your community. Um, so I also work a little bit with the Interfaith Community uh, Council of Contra Costa County as well. Um, I've done some stuff with multiple churches in our area, both uh, Christian, uh, Jewish, uh, Muslim, just from different faith communities. Uh, we believe, hey, let's engage our community together regardless of our beliefs. So. Looking forward to uh, being that representative and uh, providing a, a voice from uh, the faith side of things. And I'm grateful to be a part. So many powerful voices and powerful people in the community. I I'm just grateful to uh, even have a seat to hear you guys before I even speak. So thank you for having me. Welcome, welcome. So I, I don't think our your final member was able to join the day. Uh, no, he is here. So the final member is um no so did you want to say a few words no sure i turn on my camera too so y'all can get a good look at my face um well my name is noe gadino i was under the assumption that i was a representative for the like criminal justice impact as person as well but i guess we'll get that clarified later uh i'm also um voter engagement quarter at the rice uh youth center um and um i don't know what to say besides that i'm excited to work with all y'all i look forward to networking with y'all um uh, <clears throat> uh i look forward to being attentive and making sure that i can uh, contribute whenever i can with my short lived experience and wisdom so um any tips any expertise that y'all want to share on a young buck um, I'm more than welcome with full ears to listen, and I'm willing and ready to engage as well. So um, that's me. All right. Well, well much appreciated, and, and you're already on top of things because you're 100% right. There are actually two seats um, for uh, people who are formerly impacted, so you are 100% um, correct with that. So already on top of things. Great. And so with that, Mr. Chair, that, that is all your um, leaving members and um, joining members. Thank you, Dante, for your assistance there. Welcome uh, everyone who is um, new and joining us and those who are uh, headed out, uh, happy trails, stay safe and, and healthy, of course, going into our new year. Um, we did want to talk about uh, uh, or decide if we're gonna have a, um, our next quarterly meeting. 
um, for um, the body as a whole. And did we have any uh, potential dates, Monica, that you're aware of for um, January? No, I don't have any dates at this point. But, okay, so um, there's nothing that's prohibiting us from uh, meeting in uh, January, correct? No, okay. as long as the meeting falls in the first quarter, you don't really have to meet in January, but you can. Okay, all right, so maybe we'll meet um, latter part of that, that quarter, but we'll either way we'll meet. Um, Stephanie, did you have any um, remarks that we discussed uh, last week or any questions? Um, no, I don't think so. I think one of the things, um, I don't know if you want to actually have the discussion now, but for us to at least have on our minds is how we move forward as a body and thinking about, um, you know, I think it was Jada said, you know, we have some momentum going right now. And so how do we keep capitalizing on that momentum to really start pushing some things? And so, like you mentioned earlier in the meeting, thinking about how we're going to um, like the mayor's meetings or any city council to present on the work that we're doing. So we can make sure that we're educate, educating the whole community on the work that's happening. And also looking at where are some of those places where we need to leverage support from different folks um, to help build on the work that we're doing. And so I, I think that's just something that we need to think about um, as we move forward into the new year. And um, also another thing, because one of the things that's come up in our conversations is about the meeting notes and having um, more robust meeting notes. Um, and we know that that's um, not necessarily something that Monica can take on because she has so many other things that she's doing and so thinking about if we want to also have secretaries um, have a secretary position in our subcommittees as well as um, the main meeting to support with some of that. That's all I got. So there was, when we had our discussion the other day, the other thing that, that was brought up was um, gathering information to see if there was still interest for the subcommittee chair to continue in those roles um, as they as okay. moved around to the, to the new year, uh, so that it would be clear in terms of the, you've already, you're losing one for sure. Right. Um, so just, just getting a sense of um, the leadership of the, the work of those, those bodies. Yeah, so we wanted to discuss in, in general terms, obviously we lost Deborah um, and um, Jeff and Bisa are still, um, as of today, the, the chairs for their subcommittees. Bisa looks like she just left, uh, had, had a call to go to, but um, Jeff, are you still um, interested in, in, um, in leading your, your group? Uh, yeah, I'm game to stay on. Uh, we talked about this just a little bit in prep for um, the upcoming meeting that I also want to be, I am willing to step back as well if there are others that want to step into the role, um, but I am definitely willing and uh, sometimes in the interest of just moving forward uh, in the path that we have. Uh, so in that interest and right, I'm totally receptive if others feel that they want to take that opportunity. Okay, and another um, subtopic in this topic was we were going to have discussion um, and, and just we'll just think about this moving forward for our next meeting, but be prepared to talk about whether or not you want to remain in your subcommittees or if you want to venture off into a different subcommittee um, as an option as well. And that was one of our end of the year uh, pre discussions that we had. But we, we won't and go ahead. Members need to be in at least one subcommittee, or is it two? It's one. one. Okay. Yeah, it's at least one. But if you're interested in, you know, branching out and seeing what, what another uh, subcommittee is doing, we will, we're, we're open to that. But I think we're uh, leaning toward uh, next quarter uh, for that process. 
Are there any, um, since this, you know, we are in reflection mode. Uh, uh, John, before you move on, yeah. I was going to say I had said if the committee wanted to, I could do the December 3rd data committee before I step off and give someone else a chance to get ready. So oh, yeah. I'm available to do that if you want, or if someone else wants to step up, either way. Okay. Yeah, is there anyone who um, what is interested in taking over uh, the data subcommittee for Deborah? And obviously this is not uh, an agendized item, but just in general terms, uh, are, are, do we have interest out there? Were you raising your hand, Dr. Walker? <laughs> yeah. All right, so we'll, so we'll think about that. Um, and I think as far as our, 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 um, our own subcommittee, Deborah, let's plan on still having that meeting um, for us for our, and then we can uh, close that chapter out and, and maybe we'll have some ideas or maybe we have some surprise visitors who might want to lead that group uh, when they see how great we are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apollo, do you have a question? Oh, okay. Does anyone have any um, uh, comments or last minute 2020 <laughs> questions for the body? Not necessarily for the subcommittees, but this is the last time we'll meet as a body. I just chatted to you all, if you haven't seen it, that uh, I forwarded to Monica the announcement of our chief equity officer. So it'll be coming to your emails. Perfect. Hi, it's Tamisha. Um, I just want to say I appreciate everybody and all of the hard work and showing up. This has been a tough year. Um, I also just appreciate the reflection on how much, you know, how far we've gotten. Um, and I don't know if we've had this discussion before because I sit on so many um, bodies. <laughs> but um, saying that there's a, a lot, there are a lot of bodies, the JJCC, the D, now the JJCC has a DJJ thing, and and then the the district attorney has a youth, um, you know, a youth task force, and and then you have this body, and then there's this other office, and so I'm just wondering, and this is not a today's discussion, but maybe if we could reflect over time, when we come back next year, we can think about. Um, how do we, like, how are we in relationship to coordination with, or even like sharing information between these different spaces? Because sometimes I'm in these different meetings, but we're talking about the same things, the same populations and gathering the same data or defining a diversion. And it's the same, discussions and sometimes the same folks. And so um, I know it's a lot to ask because we're already, you know, there are already a lot of large lifts in this body, but if we could just be thinking about how are we working intersectionally so that we don't over extend or duplicate work um, and figure out how to share resources among these different spaces. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that, Tanisha. And I think that conversation has been happening at least over the last several months, um, trying to figure out how do we coordinate better because there are a lot of the same conversations happening and trying to figure out kind of what are the different lanes that we're in. And I do think like moving into the next year, even though it's not, that clear, I think we kind of have a path towards moving in that direction. All right, do we have any comments um, from the public at all? Dante, so the last thing I would just say we the uh, oh. last thing I would just say before we, we, we uh, part ways is that um, 
our co-chair appointments were for the term. And so technically both of them will uh, be out of a job uh, <laughs> come January. Now they, wanna, they may wanna continue, but if others are interested in taking that, that role on, you should think about that as well. Um, that would be the first order of business when we convene again in the new year is to uh, establish your chairs. So um, just wanted to leave you with that, that holiday gift. It's a great job, folks. I encourage you to put in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Monica, did you have any uh, closing comments or um, any business that we should be aware of? Uh, no, I just want to mention we do have a public comment. Uh, Jane raised her hand. Oh, sure. I missed that. Hi, everybody. Um, sorry to have joined you late. I was a little mixed up about um, the start time and had a doctor's appointment, but I know I missed the general public comments. But I did want to um, just um, raise the issue that we now have a new uh, bill in the assembly uh, that uh, gives supervisors the um, ability to establish a sheriff's oversight um, board. And uh, this racial, this, the original racial justice task force that preceded uh, your group um, had recommended uh, such a board. The supervisors turned that down um, uh, because there was no real legal basis um, for uh, such a uh, a board or inspector general or something of that nature. But now that that's been authorized, signed by the governor, um, I just wanted to uh, indicate, maybe others did this during public comment that I missed, um, that it would be great to see the oversight board have this specific <laughs> oversight authority, um, which it in fact actually has uh, according to California law now. So thank you very much. It's uh, very impressive to to see you all um, in meetings and uh, thanks for listening. Thanks, Jane. Any other public comment we missed? Did Cheryl come back? I don't see any more hands raised. Mr. All right. Chair. Well, with that said, it looks like uh, we're in the plus for 30 minutes. We're, we're actually ending earlier. We, we, we actually thought this would uh, take longer than expected, but uh, did well today. So thanks everyone for attending and uh, have a good uh, Thanksgiving and holiday season. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Enjoy. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Enjoy your weekends. Likewise.